Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator who really just needs to show you his magnets, Gardner. <laughs> there are cooler magnets out there, but I use these for practical purposes. I like to, I'll mount things to stuff with my magnets. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. An attack vector, a thorn in the side of any and all web developer, or even just the most convenient way to download a real web browser. Internet Explorer has always been one of the worst things about the World Wide Web, and as of June 15th, 2022, it's going away for good. I could not be happier. See, it's bad, and it's always been bad. Internet Explorer has always been a horrifically quintessential Microsoft product. A review of the original source code for Internet Explorer 1.0 found that it was using a good percentage of proprietary code from uh, Spyglass Mosaic, which was one of the first web browsers uh, ever made, one of the first commercial web browsers. It was originally developed in the summer of 1994 by a Microsoft employee named Thomas Reardon. Now, just a few months after development started, Microsoft went to Spyglass Mosaic, uh, got a license for uh, the use of Mosaic's code, and with that license, Microsoft said that they would uh, pay a quarterly percentage of all non-Windows related sales of the software. Now, originally version 1.0 of Internet Explorer was shipped with the Microsoft Plus Pack for Windows 95. Uh, however, in a typical Microsoft move, surprise, surprise, uh, they ended up distributing Internet Explorer alongside Windows uh, 95 for free, and thus they paid virtually nothing in royalties to Spyglass. Typical Microsoft. Now, this resulted in a lawsuit in 1997 in which Microsoft was required to pay $8 million to Spyglass. Uh, but, you know, that didn't stop them from um, exploiting their market share dominance and uh, embracing, extending, and trying to extinguish the free and open web. The following releases of Internet Explorer did everything that they could to place Microsoft uh, as the central controlling force behind the web's specifications. IE copied many of the features and paradigms of Netscape Navigator, which was its primary rival at the time. And while Internet Explorer 3 was actually the first web browser to uh, support cascading style sheets, or CSS, um, it w and that was a major step forward for the web as a whole. Uh, it also introduced uh, Java applets and ActiveX controls. Ah yes, the miserable ActiveX. Now this was one of the major plays by Microsoft to actually extend the open protocols of the web and extinguish the competition. See, ActiveX was a way for a, a developer to include uh, embedded uh, compiled code in a web page and execute it. And ActiveX is still actually supported today on Windows 10 through uh, through Internet Explorer 11. And there are still companies in this world that rely on Internet Explorer 11 and ActiveX controls written 20 plus years ago for their daily operations. I've seen this firsthand. It's unacceptable. There are no excuses. And I am looking at you, lazy boy. Lazy, I used to work in the furniture industry and it was the bane of my existence. <laughs> Throughout this time, Microsoft were doing everything they could to prevent Netscape from effectively competing with Internet Explorer. They withheld critical technical information for, about uh, Windows. They rewarded firms that helped them build Internet Explorer's uh, market share. And they excluded Netscape Navigator from important distribution channels. In 1999, Microsoft introduced Internet Explorer 5. And that was around the time that they were actually sued by the U.S. government uh, in an antitrust case because of their criminal activity regarding Internet Explorer's distribution model. Microsoft was found guilty of abusing their monopolistic position in the market uh, in terms of their operating system uh, market share. And the presiding judge actually recommended that Microsoft be broke up into two separate companies, one company managing the development of Windows as an operating system and the other company developing other software for the Windows platform. And at this point, I would just like to pause for a moment and imagine a world in which, you know, Microsoft hadn't successfully appealed that uh, that recommendation. What would the world look like if Microsoft had been split up into two separate companies and Windows had to exist on its own merits as a as a company itself? What kind of utopia would we be living in today? Would we have achieved world peace by now? Would we have uh, created warp drive? Would we have established a united federation of planets? 
Anyway, soon after uh, the Microsoft antitrust suit, Netscape Navigator was open sourced and actually became Mozilla Firefox. Uh, and the uh, organization uh, of Netscape became Mozilla. I remember the first time that I actually used Firefox back then, and I thought it was really cool. I loved it back then, and I, I still love it today. However, it, Firefox wouldn't be a big player for a while. Uh, and it, due to Microsoft's dominance when it came to Internet Explorer's market share here, IE was actually responsible for uh, holding back the development and advancement of JavaScript uh, throughout the early 2000s. Now, the way new features are actually added to JavaScript is pretty simple. There's a uh, neutral party called ECMA, the uh, European Computer Manufacturers Association, and they publish specifications of new features and then browsers will implement those features. In 2000, ECMA actually published the uh, ECMAScript 4 specification. And Microsoft actually backed a different proposal. They chose ECMAScript 3.1 rather than what would have become JavaScript 2.0. So Internet Explorer actually implemented ECMAScript 3.1, while other browsers were wanting to actually implement uh, ECMAScript 4. See, ES4 actually had a lot of features that are, are comparable to today's TypeScript. And if you know anything about coding and you know how the web works, uh, if JavaScript looked more like TypeScript, uh, the world would be a much better place. <laughs> Meanwhile, Microsoft decides, hey, you know what? We're actually gonna take ECMAScript 4 and we're gonna add it to .NET which was around this time, one of Microsoft's big technologies. And so because of the fact that uh, Internet Explorer was the biggest uh, browser at the time and Microsoft didn't back the ECMAScript 4 specification uh, while implementing their own proprietary version of ECMAScript 4 uh, into .NET, leaving the, the implementation fractured for almost a decade and it led to the JavaScript dark ages in the early to mid 2000s. Back in the Windows XP times, you know, uh, people were using Internet Explorer 6 because that was the version that actually shipped with uh, the operating system. And that's where many people stayed for years and years and years and years. Even though the, the standards bodies were moving forward with new specifications and Microsoft just barely updated Internet Explorer 6. Google became a big player around this time and started pushing um, Firefox to people saying, hey, use a better browser. Internet Explorer is terrible. Use, use, use Firefox. Until, you know, they decided, nah, we're not going to do that Firefox anymore. They created uh, a competitor to uh, Internet Explorer and Firefox, one that took on the name of open source, but was secretly embracing the concept of extending the web and extinguishing its competition, Google Chrome. So as the years went on and Internet Explorer lost market share, Microsoft eventually said, hey, we used to make browsers. Let's do that again. And that's when Edge was born, a scrappy, bespoke and closed source browser that wasn't particularly good at anything, but through sheer force of market dominance was able to make a splash anyway. And then Microsoft just gave up on Edge, forked Google Chrome and smacked their bastard child with Bill's patented ugly stick. So where are we now? Uh, Microsoft has announced that it is ending Internet Explorer 11 support. Internet Explorer 11 is the version that ships with Windows 10. Uh, and for all consumer versions of Windows 10, Internet Explorer is going the way of the dodo. Now that's big news for many reasons, but not the least of which is there are a, a, a group of people who still insist that it's imperative that any page uh, must support Internet Explorer no matter the technical cost. Uh, I gave up trying to <laughs> support Internet Explorer 11 um, years ago. It's uh, the, the Internet Explorer 11 is uh, crazy. It's the latest version of Internet Explorer and it was released in 2013. It's eight years old at this point. Its elimination here is a good thing, in my opinion, from a web developer's perspective. It'll get rid of the need for costly overhead and backwards compatibility considerations uh, that comes with supporting you know, an eight-year-old browser at this point. And it'll allow web standards to evolve, be adopted, uh, potentially be adopted, and for new standards to flourish. And I could not be happier about that. So I'm happy to say goodbye, Internet Explorer. You have always been the worst. <laughs> but I'd like to know what you think. Uh, what do you think about the Microsoft ending support for IE11? I would love to know 
your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know. I want to give a special shout out to Delicious Kashmiri, uh, one of my top tier singularities on Patreon. If it wasn't for people like this Delicious Kashmiri, I would not be able to do this, so thanks. Uh, if you believe in the work that I do and you want to help support the show, you can uh, head over to Patreon and become a, a patron there, or you can pledge at any level uh, on YouTube. There's links below. Uh, but no matter what you do, I appreciate you being here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like these videos, you want to stay caught up with what I'm doing here on the channel. You can also hit that like button, it really helps us out. But we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, and have a blessed day.